Good evening, here are tonight's top stories. A Guyana Fire Service officer, Clayton Pantlets, is involved in a significant incident. A mid-afternoon fire has left Dawn Hopkinson and her elderly father homeless. The Guyana Police Force has uncovered a substantial firearms cache in Georgetown. An IT technician, already facing cybercrime charges, is accused of threatening his ex-girlfriend. A construction worker has been charged with the attempted murder of his stepson. Additionally, the electoral fraud trial is set to commence next week. Stay tuned for the details of these stories. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more news. Construction worker charged with attempted murder of stepson. Sean Davidson, a 24-year-old construction worker from the northeast squatting area of Georgetown, has been formally charged with attempted murder after an incident involving his one-year-old stepson. The alleged offense occurred on July 17. Davidson appeared before Senior Magistrate Faith McGusty at the Georgetown Magistrates Court, where he was presented with the charge of attempt to commit murder in violation of Section 103 C of the Criminal Law Offenses Act, Chapter 801. Following legal protocol, Davidson was not required to enter a plea during his initial court appearance. The magistrate ordered Davidson to be remanded in custody until August 12, pending further legal procedures and a report on the case. The case has stirred significant concern in the local community of the Northeast Squatting Area, where Davidson resides. Authorities are continuing their investigation into the circumstances surrounding the alleged attempted murder of the infant stepson. Mid-afternoon fire leaves Don Hopkinson and elderly father homeless. A devastating fire on Wednesday afternoon has left Don Hopkinson and her elderly father, Albert Hopkinson, known as a major, homeless. The incident occurred at their residence on 3rd Avenue, Bartica, around 1300 hours hours. The fire is believed to have started in one of the rooms in the upper flat of their wooden house. Neighbors, upon noticing smoke emanating from a window, rushed to the scene. At that time, Albert Hopkinson was in his bedroom upstairs, while his daughter was cooking downstairs. Despite the quick arrival of the fire service, the structure was already fully engulfed in flames, with thick black smoke billowing into the sky. Efforts from onlookers and neighbors to contain the fire proved futile as it spread rapidly. In a heroic act, Bardica resident Sinead Holder, along with two others, entered the burning building and rescued Albert Hopkinson, who is in his early 90s. He suffered severe third-degree burns. Don Hopkinson, attempting to salvage their belongings, sustained significant second-degree burns. Emergency responders transported both Albert and Don Hopkinson to the Bartica Regional Hospital, where they are currently receiving medical treatment. Authorities are investigating the cause of the fire, which remains undetermined at this time. IT technician accused of threatening ex-girlfriend after cybercrime charges. A 33-year-old IT technician, Jeremy Smith, reportedly showed up at his ex-girlfriend's house and threatened her just one day after appearing in court to answer two cybercrime charges committed against the woman. Smith had appeared at the Georgetown Magistrates Court on Monday, facing charges of illegal acquisition of data and using a computer system to intimidate a person. He pleaded not guilty and was released on $75,000 bail for each offense. However, on Tuesday, the woman alleged that Smith called her several times and threatened her on Monday evening. He is still calling me. In his head, we are still together so it's like I can't carry on with my normal life. Yesterday, he got bail and he was at my house last night, she recounted. The woman immediately contacted the police to report Smith's presence at her home. Smith was asked to report to the police station on Tuesday at 9 o'clock HRS, but he failed to do so. The woman expressed fear for her life, stating that Smith seems determined to torment her. The charges against Smith allege that between March 11th and May 6, 2023, at Meadowbrook Gardens, he intentionally and without a lawful excuse acquired electronic data, including videos and photos, from the ex-girlfriend's WhatsApp messages. Additionally, it is alleged that between May 27th and July 16th, 
2024, at the same location, Smith used a computer system to publish electronic data of his ex-girlfriend that was obscene, vulgar, profane, rude, or indecent, causing emotional distress to her. The couple reportedly had an on and off a relationship for the past year and a half. In December 2022, the woman filed a restraining order against Smith, requiring him to stay 500 feet away from her. Incident involving Guyana Fire Service Officer Clayton Pantlitz. The Honorable Minister of Home Affairs, Mr. Robeson Ben, has addressed a recent incident involving Station Officer Clayton Pantlitz of the Guyana Fire Service. On July 18, 2024, Officer Pantlitz was intercepted by police at Melanie, East Coast Demerara. During a search of his vehicle, a significant quantity of illegal spirituous liquor was discovered, including 24 bottles of Hennessy 24 Johnny Walker Black Labels 10 Johnny Walker Gold Labels 12 Fireballs 48 Absolu 12 Ciroc Following the discovery, Officer Pantlitz was taken to the Guyana Revenue Authority bond to lodge the alcohol found in his vehicle. He was then escorted to the Brickdam Police Station for processing. Minister Ben expressed grave dissatisfaction with Officer Pantlet's conduct, describing it as unbecoming and a discredit to the Guyana Fire Service. He emphasized that such actions will not be tolerated by the Ministry of Home Affairs as they represent a direct breach of public service rules F-02 and offense no. 36 at Section G, as well as Guyana Fire Service Disciplinary Regulation 54, paragraphs 42 and 44. These regulations address bringing discredit to the fire service, causing harm to the public service, and engaging in improper conduct. The Ministry of Home Affairs remains committed to upholding the highest standards of conduct among personnel affiliated with its agencies and will not condone behavior that undermines public trust and confidence. A reminder was issued to all members of the disciplinary services under the ministry's purview to adhere strictly to their oath of office, standing orders, and organizational rules and regulations, noting that failure to do so will result in disciplinary action. Guyana Police Force Uncovers Significant Firearms Cash in Georgetown in a meticulously planned intelligence-led operation early Wednesday morning, the Guyana Police Force, GPF, uncovered a substantial cache of firearms and ammunition at a residence in Georgetown. The operation, led by a superintendent, took place at Sandy Bab Street, Kitty, around 5.30 HRS and resulted in the seizure of 26 handguns and high-powered rifles, along with a significant quantity of assorted ammunition. The operation commenced with police personnel executing a search warrant at the residence of Ian Fagundes, a 47-year-old clothes vendor. Upon arrival, Fagundes was seen exiting his home carrying a bag containing firearms and ammunition. He admitted to police that he did not possess a firearm license. During the subsequent search of Fagundes' residence and his vehicle, which he confirmed to be under his regular use, law enforcement discovered an extensive array of weaponry concealed in bags and a suitcase. The inventory included various firearms such as Sig Sauer, Ruger, FN-45, Smith & Wesson, Beretta, Springfield, Canik, and Glock models, each accompanied by corresponding magazines and ammunition rounds. The police also apprehended five individuals present at the scene for questioning. Carol Fagundes, Ian's 66-year-old mother. Davina Persaud, 22 years old. Teresa Fagundes, 49 years old. Tessa Persaud, 48 years old. Clement Thornton, 48 years old, identified as a handyman. Following the confiscation of the firearms, ammunition, and related items, the GPF's ballistic section took custody of the materials for further examination, marking, and secure storage in accordance with legal protocols. As the investigation progresses, Ian Fagundes and the detained individuals will await legal proceedings. Electoral fraud trial to commence next week. After numerous delays, the trial into electoral fraud related to the 2020 election is set to commence next week. Attorney General Anil Nandlal announced that the trial would begin on Monday, July 29, 2024, at the Georgetown Magistrates Court and will continue daily until September 13, 2024. This six-week period of continuous hearings aims to address criticisms of delays in the judicial process. The trial, which faced several postponements over the past three years, will finally hear testimonies from former senior officials of the country's elections body. 
Despite their previous refusals to testify before a commission of inquiry, these individuals will now provide oral statements and undergo cross-examination before City Magistrate Laron Daly. The trial was cleared to proceed following a ruling by Chief Justice Roxon George, who determined that the constitutional rights of former Chief Election Officer Keith Lowenfield and his deputy Roxanne Myers would not be violated by the Representation of the People Act, which restricts the disclosure of Guyana Elections Commission GCOM, meetings. Magistrate Daly will address 28 criminal charges related to the 2020 elections. Key witnesses expected to testify include Minister of Local Government Sonia Parag, Head of the Diaspora Unit Rosalinda Rasul, former Region for Police Commander Edgar Thomas, and Forensic Investigator Raul Ned. The prosecution has submitted certified copies of statements of poll, SOPs, and statements of recount, SORs, video interviews, and other relevant documents. Attorney at law Nigel Hughes will represent former District 4, Demerara Mahayaka, returning officer Claremont Mingo, former Deputy Chief Elections Officer Roxanne Myers, and former Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield. Additional GCOM staff facing charges include Sheffern February, Enrique Levon, Denise Bob Cummings, and Michelle Miller, all accused of allegedly defrauding voters by declaring false vote counts. Politicians Volda Lawrence, former People's National Congress slash Reform, PNC slash ARC chairperson, and PNC slash ARC activist Carol Smith Joseph are also charged with inflating or facilitating the inflation of results for Region 4, the largest voting district, to falsely secure a majority win for the APNU plus AFC coalition. Ultimately, the People's Progressive Party slash Civic, PPP slash C, was declared the winner of the elections, leading to Dr. Irfan Ali being sworn in as president of Guyana.